All right, so uh, just making this video to show if anybody has a Volkswagen e-Golf uh, with a charging problem. Um, what happened to uh, my car, uh, what, I wanted to charge one day and as soon as I connected the charge connector to the port, um, this light here would become red, okay? And it should be either green or uh, kind of bluish, but it thinks it's more green to me. Um, and there is a little diagram here that tells you what is the charge state. So when you connect it, but what was going on, it was constantly red. And what it says is charging fault. And I, I noticed that when I would charge, like it plugged the connector, usually on these Volkswagen Golf, when you connect the connector, the, um, the charging port is gonna lock. And, but it, it didn't lock. And in the instrument cluster, it was showing that the connector was connected, but usually it would uh, flash uh, uh, orange to, to tell you that it is, it is charging. But um, I'm gonna show you, like this time, it's probably gonna work because uh, I was able to make it work. But I'm just gonna show right here, there's a little locking pin that locks the charging connector on the car. So let's say when the car is starting to charge, um, even though the, the doors are not locked, this will lock. And when this little pin comes out, it will start to charge. But the problem with this car is that little pin was not coming out. Um, and I checked with my VCDS and other scan tool that I have, and there was no fault in the, uh, in the uh, charging module. And so I'm gonna show, um, I'm gonna connect it. It's probably gonna work. Um, I don't know if we're gonna see that little uh, king. Just to remove the rubber cap on the charging connector. And so we're gonna see, I'm not gonna put it right now, not completely in. Just gonna put some light there. And I'm gonna push the charge connector. See, right now it, it came out, okay? And uh, the light came green. Okay, so that's normal. And what you should expect is this orange light. I'm gonna get in the car. And also I wanted to show the car has 82, 496,000 kilometers. Uh, this is an American car, so it's been converted uh, with the scan tool. So it is an American car. So it, this is a 2015 uh, Golf SEL. So I'm gonna press the, uh, the button here. Okay. So see it says unable to start because the charging connector is in and this light flashes. But when it did not work, this was not flashing. And if I would, but this little symbol here showing that the cable is connected. That's the only thing that would show the car would not move, but this light would not flash. So I'm just gonna shut it off, just show you. And I was wondering at first, what was the problem? Cause there was no fault, no fault in the dash and no faults in any, any control module. So right now it's charging, everything is fine. Uh, okay, so I did some uh, research online and I found out that the, um, the, uh, the, you know, there's people who are having problems with this. And I found a, a bolt, technical bulletin. This is on static uh, nhtsa.gov. This is the American uh, uh, government. So it talks about e-golf from 2015, 2016, and 17, 2019, okay? So it, it groups all these cars, but then it says high voltage battery charging cable cannot be locked or unlocked. But my condition was cannot be locked, okay? So it says one of the following customer concern is present. The plug connector of the charging cable cannot be locked to the socket, cannot charge battery. So this is, was my concern. Or the plug connector of the charging cable cannot be unlocked from the socket, cannot move plug. This, this was not happening to me. 
and it says if the plug connector can be unlocked the following fault will be stored in the uh, charge manager module the j966 um in the diagnostic address the uh, it's the bd module and so this fault code should be there if the connector is locked but cannot be unlocked but in my case uh, i did not see any fault code um, so it says here the diagnostic lock pin with no tdc present watch the lock pin carefully while i inserted the plug of the functional um and powering charge cable into the socket if the pin can be seen to move but doesn't successfully reach the uh, lock position then charging will not occur so i did not know that at first because you know i'm new to these cars so anyway so in the it, it, it says here that when it doesn't lock it will not produce a fault code so um at first on these cars when it came out in 2015 in the us um the fix was to replace the whole charging connector so basically the charge port here and this one has a dc connection just below the two pins uh so it's a ccs port so this whole charge port there's two cable that goes to the battery pack these are for the dc and then there's uh, the ac uh, charging cable that goes all the way under the vehicle and I'm not 100% sure if the, it goes over top of the battery, but I've been told that the battery has to be dropped and it goes up to the charger on the front, okay? And uh, also the, there's a temperature sensor and also there's that little motor, okay? But before, um, previously when these cars were new, the only fix was to replace the whole cable. The cable was like, was like a thousand bucks or something, but the labor and everything, so that would have been expensive to fix. Um, so when I saw that, I did some research and I came across that technical bulletin. So basically there is a fix for that. So the technical bulletin and that, uh, it says replace the high voltage charging connector lock one adjuster, the F498. So at, at the beginning, I didn't know what was the name for that lock. So uh, the technical name is that uh, charging connector lock adjuster, but the uh, actual item is the f 498 so when you do the uh, research on that and this is the part here and this is where it's installed and what they want you to do is to cut the wire um, see these yellow wires they want you to cut there and then splice a connector so in order to replace that little part here uh, separately um, so anyway it, it tells you what you need as far as parts and then so if somebody was looking for this technical bulletin, maybe if you can punch this online, I'm gonna give you the number. So this is the number of the uh, technical bulletin, 931901. So it came out on the 18th of February, 2019. So that's 2051304. So um, there is a previous technical bulletin and I think they only changed a couple things. Um, so I got the parts from the dealer and this is the actual replacement part. I'm gonna, mine, mine works now, but I, I don't wanna trust it, you know? So it's made by the, cus, the company Custer, and the part number is 5QE915651C, as in Charles. And as you can see right now, it has a connector on it. And so there's four wires, okay to this and this is the low voltage loop okay so this this does not have to do with the high voltage dc battery so this is safe to work obviously if you're working on any orange cables i advise people to get the proper equipment and training to do that um all right so the other part just want to make sure that the part number that i mentioned matches this so the part number, yeah, it's uh, 00915651A. And the number is different. Yeah, so this is the item itself, but I don't know if it comes, like I guess a kit or something. But, um, so this is the, the correct number. When I ordered it, it was this. I guess that's on the label, 00915651A. So this is the, the actual, and it's made in Poland, and I guess it's called a servo. Okay, this is the part, 
and this is the black tape that you gotta use to uh, cover back the wires uh, that are gonna be spliced. So that's an N105 92002. And then this is the connector housing that's gonna be connected to this. So that's 8KO973704. So this is the, the number. And this is the wire set. So there's two wires which you cut in half and then it's gonna make you four pins like this. These little pins that goes in that uh, black housing. Okay, so so there's uh, two wires. Okay, so these are the part number, 00979790025E. And finally, these uh, little plugs, okay, that uh, will seal the connector. And also for butt connectors, which I assume that you have to heat them to get the glue, and then it's gonna make a proper seal. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I guess once the charge port and the wheel, I'm just gonna move the car to the other side of the, the shop and lift it that side. And then I'm gonna remove the wheel, the inner fender. And just as a, an example, how I was able to make it work, I, the day before, I lubricated that little pin, as you can see here, that little pin there. And then if you try to unlock it right now, okay, you can't. The only way you can do this is even if you stop the charge, okay, I don't think you could, okay, so I, I, I stopped the charge like this and you can't pull it out, okay? I'm trying, but I can't. So I'm just gonna continue the charging process. So right now it's starting again. And so I looped the, the pin, but then when I, I you know, did my research and I noticed that it, it says you know, that thing could be stuck, what I did, I tap under here on the inner fender, under here, it's just like a, this one's not plastic, it's just like a material, you know, it's for damp, sound dampening, but um, it, it moved. But when you do this, you have to plug it you plug it and as soon as you plug it, you, you tap it. So it happened to me two or three times since, but what I did, I tap on the quarter panel like this, just like that, but not with my fist or nothing. I didn't want to bend any metal, but just to do a little vibration and it worked for me. So if you ever stuck in your car is not charging. And as a note, um, I thought that maybe was just my uh, AC system was not uh, charging, but also I tried it on a DC charger this is the plug below. And I tried it on the DC charger and it would not charge. So this pin is very important to move. If it doesn't move, it's not gonna charge. So as an example, what I do most of the time to unplug it, uh, because I have the remote inside the car usually. So I unlock the door and then press on the button and unplug it, okay? So it's very simple, but on this, on the Golf, even, uh, even if the, the car is unlocked, as you can see, right now the car is on lock and see it's starting to charge and the pin, the pin went out. Um, even though I'm gonna replace it because it, it's intermittent and it, you can't trust it. So see, it's locked, I can't unplug it. So, all right, so I'm good, just this is the uh, first part and then uh, we'll take this apart and splice it and we'll go from there. Okay, so a little more information about the fault. Uh, or non-fault in my case. Uh, see, I have the uh, VCDS, and this is all the modules that this car has. Uh, as you can see, I have a brake booster fault, which I haven't tracked down yet. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect the car that much, or I, I don't have, I don't, you know, I don't notice it at all. But you can see that it uh, fault uh, seven, seven times. So it says implausible data received from engine control module. So it says intermittent. So for now. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. So the, the BD module there, this is the high voltage uh, battery charging module. So, so this is the part number of that module. Okay. But you can see I have no fault codes. And like I said, I erased the fault code since the first time that I had problem with the charger, not locking, uh, charging cable. And so I raised the fault code, but I did it at least twice probably. And as you can see, there's no fault codes here. So I guess you just gotta check that pin um, to make sure it locks. And, um, and another thing I'm gonna be changing on this car 
is I've been having this fault since I had this car and it's been uh, you know less than a year that I own the car maybe 10 months or something um, so you can see the high voltage electronic coolant pump okay so that's the fault code P0CEB short to ground intermittent and then it uh, did it 25 times and it happened at uh, 81 646 the first time. But, um, so I'm gonna be replacing the pump. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. Probably gonna make a video of it. So this is the pump. I don't, I don't know if the part number changed since the original pump was made. Um, so the part number is uh, 04L. Nine six five five six seven, and this pump has a module I think inside of it. So it's a Bosch, and you can see the part number. It's made in Germany, and so it has a, I guess three pin, three pin connector, and it creates a fault. So I just want to replace it. You know, I I I don't see nothing affecting it, but it's just I don't want the pump to. Uh, fail and then overheat uh, the electronics. Um, I assume this pump should run when the charging is uh, happening. And let's see if it, if it has a fault and it doesn't work, uh, then you know it could overheat. But these motors, uh, these electric motors, they don't really run, run very hot. Like in summertime, if you're driving for a long time, uh, the temperature is gonna be maybe around 45, 50 degrees Celsius compared to an engine is is almost double um, so um, a gas engine so um, the pump is installed right under here if you're gonna be able to see it but you know the pump is around here right, right bolted on the bracket on the front of the motor uh, right here there is like a valve but right beside it there is a pump I think on yeah I can see it more on this side you can see the you see the pump I'm just gonna lower myself full in the hole here it's kind of hard to see very hard that's here yeah right there so anyway uh, when I'm gonna get the uh, the paneling off then you will be able more to see uh, but I'm gonna do the uh, charging port lock first and then we'll go from there and also I wanted to show this diagram, this diagram is, this is the actual part that is bad, that F498. So it has four wires and it seems to go to a 16 pin uh, TCR plug. And there's other things connected to that same. And you can see AC, DC, I think these is our, um, I think there's, I think temperature sensors, not 100% sure. But um, but maybe some of them are pilot signals when the uh, charging port is connected and the car knows and it does the handshake and then it knows you know to charge at a certain rate. But these four wires, they go up to here. But what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be cutting all these four wires and then I'm gonna put a connector here because in the diagram you can see there's a connector. I think this connector is inside the vehicle, but these, wires are straight from the factory and I'll see I guess once I have that open if I can see maybe the original part number of the uh, of the item and see if it was one piece maybe it already has a connector we don't know but uh, we'll see okay so right now I'm to the point that I've removed the uh, charge port All right, so it's now it's lowered down okay but uh, first I had to remove the uh, the door itself there's only one little torque screw that screws into, into this. This is the uh, same thing as a gas vehicle. It has a little lock, little motor. So the door screws here. And then when you remove that little torque screw, then you could uh, you know lift from the back and then, but first you gotta remove the fender liner, okay? To get access to the connector. So the connector here that, that uh, you disconnect this part uh, from the, the door, obviously you remove the wheel, but 
This is the connector you have to disconnect to give you more room. This goes, see it's bolted from the back. And this is for these, the light and these two switch. Okay, so, so it's fairly easy to remove. Like I said, the screw is right there at that location. Okay, so you remove the wheel and there is uh, three torques with the flat, flat heads. So three torques, there's two here, another one here. Um, I had problem removing this particular one um, because the, this is a car that's been driven in the winter. And so the, the back of the screws, they go into a brass piece, but the bad brass piece is not a, it's not the problem is, is the, the head just like this is uh, protruding and the head was kind of rusty. So these ones I was able to remove easily, but this one, the, the brass piece, I had to spin it quite quickly in order to melt the, the part from the plastic part. And so I was able to remove it, but what it did, it spin. I, I, I went back and forth, back and forth, and then sprayed some stuff, but it, it just got stuck. And so I had to do this. So to fix this, I'm gonna put like maybe a longer bolt um, and a washer, and it's just to hold that bracket here, okay? So that bracket is kind of clipped on the main bracket. That main bracket is bolted with a bolt here. And I think, uh, yeah, this one here. So there's two bolts. Um, as you can see from on top here, there's a bolt here and there's a bolt here that holds the whole assembly. So what I wanted to, to know is um, did this uh, charge cable has been replaced before? And it seems to be not. Uh, as you can see, the part number from the cable is uh, five, JE 971-531-E, and the production date is 22-07-2014. And the car was made in 2000, uh, yeah, 14, but the eighth month. So the cable was produced before the car was completely built. So, so this is the cable from the car, and this is the old motor. The motor is the actuator rod, the little pin uh, bolts here. And then the motor sits in here. It's bolted by two other uh, screws. And so this is the original, the, the new one. As you can see, this is the new number. And the other one had a label, but it was dirty. And I tried to uh, wipe it down and it was kind of a paper. Uh, so I couldn't see that the original part number off of it. And as you can see, see these uh, connector, the color, the colors, they match the new uh, actuator or the lock and so I wanted to see I went online and uh, we have a, a program there that I was able to uh, go with the VIN number and then I punched the number and I, I my VIN number and this is the number that I found with the 531 J and um, and as you can see it looks like it had some precession um, at one time, it was the E number and then the J number. Um, and then, so it looks like it, it has three different versions until now. So the video is done in 2021. So maybe later on, there's gonna be another part number to this, but this seems to be the original cable from the car. As you can see, these uh, two DC uh, orange cable, they go here and then they go up to the, the back of the battery pack. And this one orange cable um, goes to the front of the car, as you can see. So I remove a little 10 millimeter plastic nut here and the cable is unclipped from the body on the front and on the rear, there's little pegs here. So I removed it so I can drop this. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these wires and then I'm gonna splice it install the new part as you can see the the by the rust on the the clip here okay so you can you can tell that it's you know it's not it's not new it's it's probably been there since the car has been built so uh i'm gonna do this and then uh, reassemble and i'll show what it looks like um you know after it's been fixed Okay, so now the connection is made. Okay, 
And the thing I have to do now is to put some uh, tape over the connection up to here at least, you know, this area to protect it. Um, so I have it connected. And um, so I made sure that, you know, the pin one, you know, all these pin match one to four. And you can see that uh, this one has a brown in it, the first pin. And the same thing goes to number one. And then number two has um, some uh, blue and yellow, number two, blue and yellow. The second one is blue and green. So you can see the pin number two here, blue and green. The fourth one is blue and red which is num pin number four, blue and red. So all the connections is made. And this is done by crimping this. And you gotta make sure that your crimping tool, you use the, not the sharp end of the tool, the round part here. Um, because if you use the sharp edge, you're gonna puncture the, uh, the protective layer here. And right now, all four of them are heat shrunk. And you can see, probably you can see some glue. See a little bit of glue there? And that's sealed properly. And some people, um, I know there was uh, looking at another channel, uh, South Main Auto, and he was repairing connectors like this. And people were saying, ah, that's not good, it's not good. Well, here, you can look at the connector. This is from the factory, there's big ones here, okay? You can see big butt connectors, they're um, crimped, but you can see also some glue, okay? So even the, the factory, that's how they do it. And these butt connectors are from Volkswagen. So this is a recommended repair. Uh, they don't recommend welding here. Like if I would uh, put some solder and all like solder this, um, the, the wire when it flexes, it will break very easily. Like right now it's a mechanical connection, plus it's sealed. And so this is the, the way to do it. So I'm gonna put the, the actuator back in its hole, but I'm gonna tape this. And then, and I put all the little uh, seals, okay? So to make sure that it, it doesn't uh, get any corrosion. And I'm gonna spray a little bit of stuff in the connector, some uh, contact spray. All right, so I uh, will uh, see that on the next video. Okay, so right now I'm uh, ready to install back the uh, charge port back on the body. And, um, and so, as you can see, I have put a tie wrap here for the wire. I put uh, two here. Okay, so one is holding that plug. The other one here is holding the other side of the plug. And I put another Another one here that holds the, the, the harness. And another one, a white one here that holds the other side of the cable so it doesn't rattle. So that's, this is all secured. Um, so I'm gonna put everything back uh, in and then we'll continue the video. Okay, so the charge port and the charge flap is installed. I haven't tested it yet. So I put the uh, wheel liner back in. The wheel, wheel is torqued to 100 pounds. So uh, then I'm gonna do a test, but before, because I'm do, I was doing like two jobs at the same time. So I replaced the, uh, the water pump, this is the old one. And so I removed the uh, splash shield under the motor. And um, so this is where it's installed actually. Okay, so there's a pump there. There's another auxiliary small pump right under here. And I don't know if there's a third one. I haven't looked it up that much, but I tried to find. I know there's a heat exchanger there, but I don't see another pump. I don't know if there's two of them or three. Um, but uh, right now it's running. I don't know if you can hear this, but the pump is running. And right now it, I'm into the motor and I'm doing the bleed cooling circuit, okay? So it's running, so it's circulating the pump. I put a little bit more coolant, but I didn't lose a whole lot because I used uh, two clamps. So I use a clamp on top here to squeeze the hose 
and also the one on the bottom. So I clamped it and I know I only lost whatever that was in the pump, so there's not much. Um, and so that what holds the pump into place is that that bolt here that torques and that strap is removed from here and then so the pump is removed so uh so this is the new pump install so i'm going to put back the uh, skip plate and i'm just going to see i did a full scan and because when i go into the output test uh, they're talking about cool uh, coolant circuit fan and auxiliary coolant pump ht circuit reserve coolant pump in nt so uh i don't know what's the nt and ht um and then uh bypass change over valve so anyway so this is the output test you can do but i tried i think the first one See, refuse that. Maybe you have to go back out of the um, module. I'm just gonna go out, go back in. I'm try to do the an output test. So that's, I'm gonna try this. Not, it doesn't wanna do it. Um, I'm not sure if I did that. No, it doesn't wanna do it. It's just when you go in basic setting, initial, uh, uh, cooling circuit that works. I'm gonna do the adaptation of the shutter just to see. See, it's moving, so it's responding. That I never had any problems, I think, with that before. All right, so that it did it, so finish correctly. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna look if there's any faults. No, there's no fault. And I'm gonna go into the thermal management, which it had that fault code for that pump. So obviously, and also I put the air conditioning, right now the air conditioning off, but I put the air conditioning in and it seems like when you put the air conditioning, that pump runs. So uh, for whatever reason, I guess. So see right now it has no fault in there. And I'm gonna go into that BD. See right now it has no fault, but it had a fault uh, when I unplugged the connector, it did a fault, but I erased it. And so the only fault I have in the system is, it has to do with the uh, uh, satellite radio uh, subscription, which I'm not subscribed. So, uh, all right, so I'm gonna put back the cover back on and I'm gonna go on the other bay because my charging uh, location is there. So I'm gonna test the charging port, make sure it's okay. And we'll do that, just a moment. Okay, so the car is charging. So I guess it uh, was a successful installation. You can see the pin is out and the green LED light is on, so it's charging. See, it's locked. As soon as I plugged it, it, it charged. I'm just gonna wake it up. it up now it's flashing and has that uh, the white plug saying that it's plugged in and um, I don't know if I've you know noticed before because the pump is very quiet um, the only way to know is when you reach from under and you put your hand on it right now it doesn't run because I Ah, right now it kicked in. Right now it runs. I guess it runs after a few seconds when the, because right now I, I kind of stopped the charging when I unlocked the door. But um, right now it's starting again. And you don't feel it on the hose on the top. You feel it on the bottom hose here on the container on the expansion tank but mostly if you reach from under you can right you put your hand on the pump and you notice that the pump is running but other than that it's very quiet you can probably hear it right now there's a fridge running in here at the corner there so it makes a little noise but if it would be completely silent yeah, i can hear it so i don't know if it was running before 
or just running intermittently. So I'll have to see later on if I get the same fault for that pump because um, that's pretty much the only thing I had to do. Uh, put the pump in and uh, we'll see if that fault goes away. So other than that, pretty successful um, installation. It wasn't very hard. Um, it's just if you get a car that the uh, charging does not commence or if you get the, the charger connector stuck, then it could be that uh, little uh, locking pin motor that's uh, acting up. All right.